For Donald Trump's entire life, before becoming a politician, he was a strong, strong supporter of abortion, verging on an enthusiast. He was the kind of guy who would say, what are we going to do about this? When a woman told him he impregnated her. He told that story in 2004 on Howard Stern's radio show. Donald Trump said, you know, all the time it was like, excuse me, what happened? And I said, well, what are we going to do about this? She said, are you serious? It's the most beautiful day of our lives. I said, oh, great. And now Donald Trump's most ignored child, Tiffany Trump, has that story of her birth that lives publicly with her for her entire life, thanks to then abortion enthusiast Donald Trump. So Donald Trump has been lying about abortion every time he has spoken about it since he became a Republican candidate in 2015. He lied about it again today when he once again proudly took credit for ending abortion rights in this country. I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. All legal scholars on both sides is a Trumpian lie, of course. In fact, most legal scholars, like most people in the United States of America, very much wanted to preserve women's reproductive rights established in Roe versus Wade 51 years ago. Donald Trump then announced today a new position on abortion, which he was afraid to announce during the Republican presidential primaries because it could have cost him Republican votes in those primaries. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both. Donald Trump's lie there, of course, is that everybody wanted to leave abortion up to the individual states. That is a lie. Most Americans did not want to have different abortion laws in each state. And now Donald Trump is taking full credit for making reproductive rights impossible for one third of American women. The Washington Post reports nearly one in three women ages 15 to 44 live in a state where abortion is banned or severely restricted. Today, Donald Trump said in effect that he fully supports every abortion provided in the state of California because that's California's choice. And at the same time, Donald Trump fully supports a five-year prison sentence for anyone involved in an abortion in the state of Idaho. That five-year prison term for involvement in an abortion in Idaho was upheld by three Trump-appointed federal appeals court judges. Lindsey Graham showed us today what would have happened if Donald Trump announced his leave it up to the state's policy while Republican candidates were still running against him. Senator Graham said, I respectfully disagree with President Trump's statement that abortion is a state's rights issue. I will continue to advocate that there should be a national minimum standard limiting abortion at 15 weeks. Donald Trump fired back immediately, saying, Senator Lindsey Graham is doing a great disservice to the Republican Party and to our country. At first, he wanted no abortions under any circumstances. Then he was up to six weeks where you're allowed abortion. Now he's up to 15 weeks. Lindsey Graham is considering himself lucky tonight that Donald Trump did not give out his cell phone number this time the way Donald Trump did during his first presidential campaign when he was angry at Lindsey Graham. I wrote the number down. I don't know if it's the right number. Let's try it. 202. 228. I don't know. Maybe it's, you know, it's three, four years ago, so maybe it's an old number. 202, 228. So, I don't know. Give it a shot. Trump voters gave it a shot. And Lindsey Graham had to get a new cell phone number.
and has spent every day of his life since then living in abject fear of Donald Trump. Donald Trump also said this in his rebuke of Lindsey Graham today. Many good Republicans lost elections because of this issue, and people like Lindsey Graham that are unrelenting are handing Democrats their dream of the House, Senate, and perhaps even the presidency. Donald Trump is right, of course, that the repeal of Roe versus Wade is one of the issues that will defeat Donald Trump in the election, especially now that Donald Trump is announcing that abortion, for him, is just a political calculation. But he is wrong to believe that he can teach ardent abortion opponents who believe that all abortion is murder, that abortion is really just a political issue, that the Republican position on abortion should just be a political calculation. It should not be driven by factors like the rights of women, medical science, or morality, just politics. That is now the official Trump position on abortion rights, just a political calculation, no principles involved. The Biden-Harris campaign posted this video today about Amanda and Josh Zawoski, a Texas couple who attended this year's State of the Union address by President Biden after what they endured in Texas, thanks to Donald Trump. This is one of our willow boxes. This is just filled with some of the things that we had started gathering for her while I was pregnant. Yep. There's her little baby book. This is the outfit that she was gonna maybe wear home from the hospital. Now all of these. Um, this is the blanket that she was in. And these are her little footprints. Texas Congressman Colin Allred, now a candidate for Senate in Texas, will join our discussion in a moment. President Biden released this statement today. Trump doesn't tell you the mega Republicans he controls in Congress have put forward bills that could ban fertility treatments and that the Speaker of the House he empowered is one of the strongest supporters for a national abortion ban in the nation. Let there be no illusion. If Donald Trump is elected and the mega Republicans in Congress put a national abortion ban on the resolute desk, Trump will sign it into law. I am determined to restore the federal protections of Roe versus Wade. The fundamental right to choose for women will once again be the law of the land. If you give me and Vice President Harris a Democratic Congress, that is exactly what we will do. Trump is simply lying. There was no groundswell of support in America for overturning Roe. In fact, support for Roe is higher today in America than it has ever been. The real truth is Trump made a political deal in 2016. He promised to appoint a court that would get rid of Roe, and he had to make good on that debt. So he did. It was never about public policy or what was right or what Trump believed it was, always about politics. It was always about politics. And Vice President Harris said this today. If he were to be put back in a position where he could sign off on a law, he would sign off on a national abortion ban. Let's be very clear about that. And that obviously makes the contrast between Joe Biden and Donald Trump quite clear. Donald Trump seems very worried that Lindsey Graham is ruining everything. He's ruining the presidential campaign for Donald Trump, ruining the Senate campaign for your opponent and for other Republican candidates. Uh, and he may very well be right about that. 
well, you know, there goes loyalty to friends for Donald Trump. But I think the bigger picture, you know, the sun peeking out from the moon on this cosmic day, uh, is what President Biden and Vice President Harris just said. I mean, to be clear, as President Biden has said, if the Republicans got in and controlled Congress and put that bill on the resolute desk, Donald Trump would sign it. And what really is amazing about this day and that heartbreaking ad that you just showed, Amanda's story, which has been replicated all across the country, unbelievable, might be heard from even having a baby again, which is what she wants. What is really amazing about this is you don't need a fact checker for that ad, Lawrence. That fact checker is in Donald Trump's video itself. When he says so clearly, I am proudly, those are his words, the person who has the responsibility, who is responsible for overturning Roe v. Wade. So while Donald Trump, this choice is clear, while Donald Trump overturned 50 years of legal rights for women, Joe Biden will restore it. Yeah, and the, the Trump position is that he fully supports what happened to Amanda because the Republican government of Texas has decided that should happen to Amanda in Texas. And Donald Trump is very happy for it not to happen to anyone in California or Massachusetts or New York. Right. That's the Trump position. If you live in a Republican-controlled state, uh, you're going to live under this regime that can do this to people like a man. And what does that mean? One third of women in America live in this regime and the other ones don't. A patchwork of laws, bans on travel that some of these states have put in place, criminalizing doctors that some of them have put in place. Um, this idea that you're going to have no exception for rape or incest like we see uh, out of Texas. That is what he is basically sentencing them to after position after position, as you point out, in line with whatever politics suits his fancy. This is the moment where people are going to have to choose what side they're on. And when he says there's a groundswell of support to overturn Roe, <laughs> look at the voters turning out in the prairies of Kansas, turning out in Ohio by an 11-point margin in that great state where we're going to see Sherrod Brown win that election. Um, or you go over to Wisconsin, or Tammy Baldwin, great senator. Look at that. Ten-point margin on the Supreme Court there. You look at what's going on all over the country. The voters are speaking out loud and clear about where they are on this. And he just took responsibility for this chaos. Donald Trump took responsibility. Senator, I want to review a moment that I know none of us can forget, uh, delivered to us on this network by Chris Matthews in 2016. Donald Trump saying that, yes, of course, there has to be some punishment for women who get a, a abortion services. Let's listen to this. Do you believe, no, but, in, but you're, do you you're, believe in punishment for abortion? Yes or no? Is a principle. Uh, the answer is that there has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. <laughs> so, Senator, he supports the five-year prison term in Idaho for anyone involved in an abortion, and he clearly would support, as he said right there, uh, any prison term you might want to impose on a woman anywhere in the country, as long as a state decides to do that. That's the Trump position. Exactly. Or maybe they're judges, right? Mephapristown, judge down there he put on in Texas. There we go. Um, he is basically saying, throw this to the state and we will continue this chaos. And I'm going to support, when he says throw it to the states, that means he is supporting uh, these draconian provisions that many, sadly, these governors who ran to the state house after the Dobbs decision came out and saw who could match and got the most draconian state law possible, he owns it now. He owns it. He already owns the judges. He put those Dobbs judges on the court. But now he is also going to own what these states do. He has made his position clear. And that is when the sun came out from under the moon. And so we can now know when Amanda tells her story, this guy has claimed responsibility for it. Andres Vance, just when we think we've heard all the arguments already on this issue, 
Uh, Jack Smith comes through with another brief with new ways of saying these things that become ever more powerful every time he's forced to restate them. I think that that's right. You know, this is a technical legal brief, and Smith is making arguments predicated on what he hopes the Supreme Court will do, ruling that there is no immunity, and what he's afraid the court might do, ruling that there's limited immunity, in which case Smith says to the court, no matter what you decide about what immunity might exist, Donald Trump isn't entitled to any immunity. You should send this case back to the district court for trial because his conduct involves a purely personal conspiracy. And although we're entitled to use evidence of his official acts, we could try this case just as a private, unofficial acts conspiracy. So it's extremely well-crafted from a technical legal point of view. The language, though, is beautiful, Lawrence, and I'm struck, despite trying to read it with my professional hat on, how emotionally this mm -hmm. brief hits. This is Jack Smith saying to the Supreme Court, Please don't sacrifice the American experiment on the altar of Donald Trump. It is in, in many ways an emotional brief about what it means to be an American and to have no man be above the law in this country. And it is supported by other briefs uh, filed, including uh, by historians. This is what the historian's brief uh, filed today says. The founder's disinterest in taking up executive immunity is not surprising. The constitutional debate was framed by the Federalists, who sought to include an executive that was strong, but whose powers were not boundless, and those who were concerned that any executive would be too inherently dangerous. The Federalists retained their concern that a president must be subject to constraints on his ambition. They certainly were not advocating for increasing a, a president's privileges or immunities. The framers did not ignore the subject. They rejected it. On this point, there are no credible, competing, original understandings. Uh, and Joyce, as we know, the Republicans on the Supreme Court uh, claim that they believe uh, that original intent is what matters. They do, in fact, make that claim, and this brief is powerful on that point. This is leading historians, historians who look at and, and study what the Founding Fathers meant. And that's what the conservative majority on this court says matters to them. They've used that in other cases, including Dobbs, the abortion decision. The conclusion in this amicus brief is pretty startling. It's really across the board saying absolutely no immunity. This was not what the founding fathers meant the Constitution to mean. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.